I'm Todd Jaderborg with Odin's Wolf Survival. In the last video I did, I made cordage out of a plastic bag and did the typical reverse twist. This time I'm showing how to make a drop spindle and this is uh, basically a Harry Potter wand out of red cedar that I went out and grabbed and just peeled and kind of straightened it out. A couple pieces of stone and then we've got strips of plastic bag again as that happened to be what was handy and we needed some a bit of cordage so what we're gonna do is take the stone and tie it to the stick such as that I usually tend to run it oh, about two-thirds of the way down. There are lots of people out there a lot better at doing this sort of thing than I am. But I know the principle of it. So if I have to, I can use it, make one. In this instance, it isn't going to be pretty. Some of them I've seen are absolutely gorgeous, but... I'm not too worried about being pretty, I just want it to work. And the weights, they should be closer in size probably, but I used what I found and nature isn't always perfect and you don't always get what you want in the real world, which most kitties don't seem to grasp anymore. But we end up basically securing the weights to the stick. And that's that's all a drop spindle really is when you get down to it, is a weighted stick. I've seen them carved out of a piece of log with bronze, brass, steel weights on them. It doesn't seem to matter. All you need is a stick with a weight on it that's fairly well balanced. I mean, it can't be completely lopsided, otherwise it'll work, but it'll just make it awkward to use. This isn't gonna win any prizes, but that's pretty much it. And now what we're gonna do is, in the previous video, we made a bunch of, cut a bunch of loops out of a plastic bag. Okay. What we're going to do is join them together in this one. Like that. And you work them down a little bit so they're where they're together. Oops. Damn it. If they tear through like that, just tie a little knot in them because it isn't going to matter a great deal. Well, that was a crappy part of the bag. Sometimes that happens and you have to work with it. Murphy must think he's funny messing with me today. centered but oh well it'll work for its purposes okay you take I usually tie it on and then you start spinning and it's called a drop spindle because you you basically spin it and then let it drop or hang and keep spinning until the cord is just tight as you want it. I 
Okay, then I bring it down and start wrapping it around. Come back up. And usually uh, you have a longer piece. I'm trying to work within the camera frame. Do a half hitch. Spin out some more. And just keep spinning it up. Waste off a little bit, you can tell by the way the... But when you spin up your cordage, you can go back and wrap it around a tree branch or something like that to get it in halves and then start... You spin up your excess down here and then twist it together to make it as thick as you want. Again, another half hitch. Slide out some more and start spinning it up. Now if you're standing up you can get three, four, five, six feet of it like this pretty easy. I happen to be sitting down in front of the camera so my reach is limited but we still have got... Then when you get it to where you want it like this, then you keep wrapping it around the base until you got a great big wad of it. So your cordage builds up at the bottom. I didn't secure my stones very good, so I'll have to I'd have to redo those. But you just keep adding more loops in until you get as much as you want. That's a basic drop spindle. That's done fairly quickly. They could be made a lot better and easier, but that was just a quick quick knockoff one on how to do it to make up some quick cordage if you need to. And that's all there is to it.